This is Tom Bernanke and today I'm talking about the top 10 reasons you need to stop drinking milk right now and the one big secret. And we're gonna count down from least important to most important factors and we're starting now. So I know that's a sensationalist intro and listen, I personally drink milk myself. There's so many videos right now. What are these guys talking about? Why do we need to stop drinking milk instantly? And as I look through the studies, and the research, there's actually some really good reasons that we should stop drinking milk, but there's actually some good reasons we should drink it. So I'm gonna go over everything about milk. Dairy products are present in cheeses, in yogurts, in butter, in creams, in milk, whole milk, skim milk, semi-skimmed. There's a ton of different nutritional profiles. There's a lot of pros and cons to each one. Global dairy consumption is 800 millions of tons annually. This is so much money to every country's economies. If we stop drinking milk, it would probably put whole regions out of business. But here are the top 10 reasons to cut out dairy. Number 10, cultural and personal preferences. So a lot of people come from areas that don't support drinking milk. Being a vegan, for example, there's more political reasons to this. I kind of won't get into those right now. Number nine, ethical and environmental concerns. This is an extremely important decision for many, but not at all for other people. This is such a complicated debate. I've seen arguments about how bad cows are for the environment, but then I've seen arguments saying the amount of corn needed to supply the amount of calories that the cow would have is much more. So there's arguments on either side. It's hard to know what the perfect answer is but dairy farming has been a significant environmental footprint, including greenhouse gases, land use, water consumption. The market for non-dairy alternatives, almond milk, soy milk, oat milk has been growing rapidly, but at the same time, look at what goes into almond milk. That creates even more pollution and leaves even more of a footprint. So this is a fairly complicated argument, but this is probably a major reason why a lot of these videos are talking about why milk is so bad for you. So cultural and environmental reasons are so important for a lot of people. I put them at the bottom of the list. This is a medical channel. That's what I'm going to focus on. I am not taking a strong stand one way or the other. I'm just going over all the details and all the recent studies, but local farms have a different footprint than the big mega corporations that are popping up. They are considered to be an excellent use of land compared to some of the alternatives like potentially almond milk. And the land use, while not perfect, alternatives, are they any better? We need our nutrition from somewhere. And milk is considered to be extremely good nutrition. Your calcium, your vitamin D, your protein. And from that standpoint, are the resources efficient? I have seen lots of good arguments from both sides, but unfortunately, they both devolve into political talking points at the end. And who can forget cow farts? This is a big argument saying cows contribute to climate change by farting. There's actually a little bit of truth to this because they produce methane. Let me know if you want a deep dive video. This is such a complicated topic. I even saw an article that's saying cows who eat seaweed in some farms have like 90% less carbon and methane emissions. Maybe that's the solution. This could be an hour long video on its own. Tell me if you want that made. Hit me up in the comments if that's more important for you though. I love hearing the feedback and you know what? You guys, there's more of you watching some of these videos than these studies can pull. So I love hearing your input. Number eight, hormonal considerations. The impact of hormones in dairy on human health is still a subject of research. While potentially significant, it's less clear cut compared to issues like allergies or lactose intolerance. Concerns have been raised about the contamination of milk with hormones, antibiotics, other substances. The farming practices claim they're doing a very good job. It's hard to know the answer for sure. The exact impact, nobody really knows the answer. Is there really strong studies on this? There is not. What an exciting topic, but good hormones are vitamin D. There is insulin-like growth factor, but this has been proven to be degraded before it enters your body. And cows do have estrogen, but that type is inactive in humans. It seems to be a strong consensus that these are safe. 
Now, on the other hand, the bad antibiotics are used in the cow industry, but this is not to speed up milk production, it's to treat infections in the cow, like for example, mastitis, which is the milk production area. There is strict regulations and the FDA does measure levels randomly. There are artificial hormones in the past that have been used to stimulate milk production, but these are heavily regulated now. They are regulated by the FDA and heavy fines are carried out in most developed countries. Number seven, chronic diseases. The link between dairy and chronic diseases like cancer is still being explored, but there's nothing definitive. So some of these videos talk about this, but there's nothing definitive towards cancer and milk or dairy. This wasn't meant to be a setup, but milk is actually unbelievably well studied for heart health. It's shown to lower stroke rates, blood pressure rates. It's very proven for diabetes. So people who drink it actually have less diabetes. Cancer rates, it's been associated with decreased colorectal cancer. For bones, it's associated with less osteoporosis, but it's not all rosy. There is some association with potentially Parkinson's disease, but that might be smaller statistics. Number six, bone health debate. The relationship between dairy and bone health is complex and there's not a perfect answer. Milk is traditionally touted for its bone health due to its calcium content. But some studies have questioned the extent of these benefits. The Harvard School of Public Health notes that dairy intake is not necessarily essential for good bone health. But at the same time, man, the only thing I hear about the Harvard School of Public Health is how much contracts from big companies they're getting. And man, they have not looked good in the news lately. I don't think anybody could argue about that. Tell me what you think about Harvard. I looked through the studies and they are uniformly in agreement that milk is really good for your bone health. For example, very large scale studies with many, I'm talking like 50 plus studies agree that the risk of hip fracture is way lower. And this is pretty much every single review article. So how do certain people come up with these recommendations that milk is bad for bone health? The only thing that I can think of is politics or some type of financial inducement. Am I missing something? Can anybody actually find me any strong or high level studies that are not just observations or some type of polls which can be manipulated? But the bottom line is milk has calcium, vitamin D, protein, phosphorus, magnesium, and compared to other stuff like juices that people drink filled with sugar, to me this is the way better option for my kids. Number five, acne and skin issues. This can be important for individuals who struggle with skin conditions related to dairy, but it may not be universally relevant. There is so much research on milk and skin conditions. The good news is the consensus seems to be that sugary and fatty drinks overall are linked to skin conditions, not just milk and dairy. The bad news is a meta-analysis showed that more milk drinking causes more acne. But if we already know sugary drinks and fatty filled drinks cause this, then I'd assume milk would cause it as well. And further studies looking at cheeses and yogurt showed absolutely no correlation because those might not have as much sugar or fat inside them. The causes are thought to be IGF-1, but other studies show that it's broken down before it enters our body. So it's probably the sugar, the lactose, the fat, and skin conditions are so complicated. To me, this one makes sense as the more calories and fat and sugar. Number four, digestive health. Many people find that cutting out dairy improves their digestive health. This is a very practical reason. So if you drink milk and you get an upset stomach, this might be a great reason. There's lots of beneficial bacteria and enzymes in the pasteurization process. So a lot of the times the reason we drink milk, historically there was beneficial bacteria and enzymes present in milk, but with pasteurization, this is a process of heating milk to kill harmful bacteria. This also destroys beneficial bacteria. And while the safety benefits of pasteurization are very crucial, this loss might impact digestion benefits. And the thing is the milk we evolved to drink it's not necessarily the milk we're drinking now. It's cleaned, it's heated. There's, it's not as dangerous, but it's not the same milk we're meant to drink. The extent of this is not known for certain. The gut microbiome is so exciting, but the bottom line is milk can have good effects and bad effects. Some people don't have the right GI bacteria and it can't digest lactose properly. That's gonna make you gassy and some studies show this, but other studies show cheeses, yogurts, and milk can actually make beneficial changes in the gut microbiome over time. So some people are good, some people are bad. The bottom line is if you're not 
tolerating it well don't keep drinking it but if it's working great for you there's nothing bad about taking it my wife is a dietitian so she talks about this stuff all the time to me check out some of our videos together on the gut microbiome and prebiotics number three alternative sources of nutrition ensuring adequate nutrition is critical dairy products are a key source of several important nutrients they are rich in calcium they're essential for bone health they provide vitamin d potassium and other minerals but a lot of the times during the pasteurization process a lot of these vitamins are lost it does reduce the levels of certain vitamins like vitamin c the b vitamins the reduction is a concern overall you're still getting a decent amount of vitamins in there but again it's not as high as it was before and today with supplements multivitamins there are ways to make up this deficiency in fact check out my osteoporosis videos my vitamin d videos i go over just how to do that how to measure your levels and how to make sure you're healthy in that regard since my fourth kid is coming i'm very focused on milk drinking right now but the good news is the studies are actually excellent there's a lot of child-based studies for grade schools for high schools that kids who drink cow's milk have better dental health better stature better bone health better appetite control so there's a lot of positives again none of this stuff's 100 so i don't want this to be a crazy debate but the studies overall look very positive but the downsides are is there lactose intolerance for kids is there allergies for adults or kids what about protein protein's great in milk calcium's great in milk the vitamins are great in milk there's omega-3 fatty acids potentially in milk although probably not in the most major of levels so milk overall is very beneficial from a nutritional standpoint the downside is what's your gut microbiome like number two allergies for those with dairy allergies avoiding dairy is non-negotiable and is essential for avoiding diarrhea throwing up and feeling sick milk is one of the most common food allergens particularly among children in fact i remember at my school there was a mom actually trying to get milk banned which is crazy to me because everybody drinks milk every kid additionally lactose intolerance affects a large portion of the world's population leading many to seek dairy alternatives some studies suggest that modern milk processing methods might alter milk proteins in a way that can increase allergenic potential particularly in people who are sensitive or have a history of other allergies however more research needs to be done on this i have a very close friend whose son went through a really bad allergy reaction to milk and this can be very complicated he's seen allergy specialists and the diagnosis is very complicated they play it safe 99 percent of the time because almost five percent of kids under three can have an allergy but the good news is most outgrow it by age three to five the question is what kind of crazy doctor would risk that kid drinking milk that could end your career so doctors are unbelievably cautious i know i would be you never want to be responsible for somebody having an anaphylactic shock by recommending milk so i'm going to ignore the diagnosis by allergy specialists this is such a scary and legally dangerous topic number one lactose intolerance as the most common immediate concern affecting significant portion of the global population lactose intolerance is a highly practical reason to cut out dairy has a direct and clear impact on daily health and well-being for those affected it's estimated that only about 35 percent of the global population can adequately digest lactose the sugar and milk beyond infancy the ability to digest lactose in adulthood is a relatively recent evolutionary adaption and was found mainly in people with european ancestry small intestine does not digest lactose then it makes it to the bacteria in your gut and they can create gas they can create some byproducts some indigestion and for this reason people confuse lactose intolerance with an allergy it's not this is why a lot more people think they have allergies than they do some bloating does not mean you are allergic but on the other hand lactose intolerance this is a very crazy statistic but 68 percent of people around the world can't digest all the lactose they drink european people 28 percent are lactose intolerant so most can digest a lot in europe whereas the middle east is much more likely to not be able to consume lactose but a meta-analysis found that on average people can consume 12 grams per intake before they get lactose intolerance so they can consume some but if you drink too much milk eventually you get some bloating some gas tell me your experiences does it make you gassy 
For me, I drink a ton of milk. I've never had these issues, but I am from Poland, so potentially I'm in that European lucky few. So the reality is most of the reasons you should cut it out is if you don't tolerate it well. Milk is pasteurized, it's much safer, it's more commercially produced. There is still some good vitamins in it. There's still a lot of protein in it. Those are good reasons to drink milk. And hey, I drink milk, I don't drink as much as I used to. I enjoy a cool glass of milk with a cookie. Probably too much, I should cut that out. I don't think it's good for me, but I enjoy it. Here's the big secret on milk. The economic impact. The dairy industry is a significant part of the global agricultural community. In the United States alone, this is billions and billions of dollars and a ton of processing. There's studies on both sides, but the bottom line is when I look through these videos, they're either financially motivated or politically motivated. That's what everything comes down to right now. The bottom line is if you're allergic, if you're lactose intolerant, if you get diarrhea, don't drink milk, cut it out. But if you enjoy it, the reality is, is this really worth than like juice, you're getting some protein, you're getting some vitamins, vitamin D, some calcium, drink it in moderation. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it's hard to know for sure. Can you trust studies when 80 to 90% of people involved are receiving funding from one source or another? That's the tricky thing now. You have to use your best clinical judgment. So tell me what you think. Do you drink milk? Do you hate milk? If you cut it out, did it help you? Let me know in the comments down below. I love hearing the feedback on this and it makes a huge difference. We sometimes get a better answer in the comments than some of these studies.